Okay, welcome to the video on starter motor bench testing. And in this video, I'm going to go through the procedure that you're going to need to follow when bench testing a starter prior to disassembly. We want to make sure that it's operating correctly so that after you're done taking it apart and putting it back together, uh, that the starter is going to be working properly again. So, let's take a look at the procedure. Here I grab the starter right off the rack, okay? And don't use the starters that are from the automobiles in the lab. Grab one out of the rack. And uh, we want to be careful not to put this part into the jaws of the vise, if at all possible. Because what happens is you're going to destroy the magnets that are located all around the barrel of the starter. So here what I've chosen to do is go for one of the ears. And I'm going to put that in the vise instead. Make sure that my starter solenoid is facing up so I can access it. And before we get going um, on the testing procedure, let's take a look at some of the components. Here's the starter motor, this part right down here, and starter solenoid. A couple terminals on the starter solenoid, and we've already reviewed starter solenoid, so we already should know that this is the B positive terminal or battery positive and of course from a cable this is going to connect to the basic uh, to the positive terminal of the battery okay. here is the battery positive side that's going to flow through this cable down into the starter motor and of course right here we're left with one small terminal and that's going to be our S terminal of course that's going to be uh, connected to the vehicle's ignition switch so whenever you turn that key as you recall, low current is going to be sent through the starter relay. That starter relay is going to close, and we're going to send a little bit higher current. That higher current eventually is going to wind up right here um, at the S terminal of the starter. So let me go ahead and get this set up for you. I have a booster pack that I grabbed from the tool room. And because the starter is in the vise, we can call that ground. So I'll go ahead and I'm going to hook one of my clamps directly to the vise. You can hook it right to the starter also, it really doesn't matter, as long as you have a good connection. Then I'm going to simulate my battery positive cable coming from the battery, going right to the B positive lug of the starter. Okay. After we have that complete, I'm going to go ahead and hook up my remote starter switch. Okay, that's this tool right here. We have a few of those hanging up in the tool room. You'll notice that it has a push button. So when you're ready for the starter to turn, just go ahead and depress the button. You have two alligator clips. So where do the alligator clips go? Well, we're making our circuit. So one of them is going to go to the S terminal of the starter. That's that small terminal I showed you. And we're also going to have to put it directly to our battery cable. Okay. And now that everything's connected up, uh, if you're connected up correctly, once I push this button, the starter is going to engage. So keeping our fingers clear, let's give it a try. And you can hear that. What I'm going to do is move you around to the side here and hopefully you can get a look at what that starter gear looks like when it comes out. Again, very dangerous when it comes out. Keep your fingers clear. Once I push the button, you can see that drive gear come out. And that drive gear is what's actually turning the flywheel of the engine. So, we're not done yet. We've hooked up our circuit. The next thing that I'm gonna ask you to do is take a current reading. So let's do that. Uh, how much current is this starter pulling? Now, we really can't use our voltmeter because our voltmeter is only good to 10 amps. So in this instance, I'm going to use my inductive pickup clamp and I'm going to set this to the um, 110 amp scale. This has a rotary switch on there, so if you notice, I set it to 110 amps. Here's 400 amps. I can go up a little higher, but I don't think I'm going to need that. 
And what I'm going to do with this is install it right on those booster pack cables. Okay. And I'm putting this around. Let me make sure I get you a good shot here. I'm going to put that right around. Okay. And when I squeeze that remote starter, let's see how much current is being drawn. And it said 86 amps, okay? 86 amps, that's not much amperage uh, being drawn by that starter motor. And the reason for that is, you gotta remember, the starter motor right now is mounted up in a bench vise. It's not turning an engine, okay? When they were actually doing a starter current draw uh, with it installed in the car, it's gonna pull significantly more current because it's spinning an engine over. However, I just wanted to show you what the procedure was for checking current draw and um, ensuring that your starter is working properly before you disassemble it. So revert back to this video as many times as you need. Hope this helps you out.